today I'm going to discuss a FET phase splitter. I'm going to show you the circuit and talk you through it just a little bit. Some things you need to know about it. Why a FET? Why not a bipolar junction transistor? You can swap them out. Uh, a FET can be used anywhere where you see a BJT. Say uh, if you have found a circuit online for a noise gate where it has a, a couple BJTs, you can put FETs in there and it'll work exactly the same. You don't have to change all the any of the other components out either. It's kind of neat. The difference is that a BJT only passes current in one direction between the collector and the emitter. A FET can pass current in both directions between the drain and the source. It really make, gives it a little bit more usefulness in general application. So when I'm uh, prototyping something up, I like a FET because I, I don't have to worry about direction of current and sometimes that's to the advantage of the circuit. But today we're going to use it to create a phase splitter. So on, on screen is the circuit. <clears throat> C1 is the blocking capacitor for DC. It will pass only AC. R2 and R3 are set the same so that the amplitude of B and C, one being out of phase, one being in phase, are exactly the same. The amplitude of A is equal to B plus C. Easy peasy, this is what a phase splitter does. Now then, R1 serves two purposes. R1 is also the input imp impedance to the circuit. It's set at one meg. That's, you, you may need a high input impedance, but more importantly, the reason that you want to set it for one meg is that in a FET, on the gate is a, in the circuit itself, is a tiny capacitor. And that very tiny capacitor, while it's not really large, will hold charge for a while. And the reason that is important is that when there's no voltage between the gate and the source, the FET will not change state. It may be on or it may be off, but it's neither on or off from the previous state. So if, it, if the FET is on when you hit that gate to zero, it remains on. If you hit the gate at zero and it turns off and there's no voltage difference between the gate and the source, it remains off. Which is fine for if you're creating a switch that you want to turn on and off something. Like using it in a noise gate application. You want to get a voltage to a point and then turn this FET off so it turns off the amplifier. And then when the noise level uh, gets above a th certain threshold, it turns on again. Well, in order to get that kicked off center, you need R1 in order to bleed that tiny capacitor that's inside there. And then when you're processing a signal such as this, this becomes very important. We don't want that FET uh, hanging up around zero. Is it exactly zero? Well, the spec sheets say it is, but in a practical application, somewhere around a couple millivolts either side of zero, that FET is going to hang up and we don't want that. So we put R1 in there, that one meg, and it will constantly keep that capacitor bled off, the capacitor that's in the FET so that we don't have hysteresis or a gap in the signal processing to the output. The beauty of a phase splitter is that A, uh, B and C will always be 180 degrees apart. But then you're building a circuit and R2 and R3 aren't quite the same because when we get a, a resistor such as this, it's, it's plus or minus 20% in value. And then you, you get this bright idea of, well, I can balance out the amplitude by putting a bypass capacitor in on R3 and then also maybe adjusting R2. Well, let me explain what happens when you do that. And this could be very useful for a space splitter in another application. That is, when you bypass R3 with a capacitor C4, it'll be an electrolytic you will increase the amplitude of B. It, maybe you're getting it from uh, up to a match of C, or maybe you want it to be slightly more, whatever 
the, the purpose is, I don't know. But it will always be out of phase. C here is going to be out of phase with A. It's going to be out of phase. And then all of a sudden, it's not a phase splitter. Uh, the A and, uh, B and C are out of sync with one another, but they're not, it's not a phase splitter at this point. Different application at this point. We need the phase splitter for the next thing. And let's ex I'll explain to that a little bit. So it's going to be off. That means once you use C4 in this circuit, even though it's kind of a, more of an amplifier than a, a phase a splitter, uh, these B and C will never be exactly 180 degrees apart. And the reason for that is you can see the calculation here on the right. The phase difference is equal to the capacitance or resistance value times the frequency value. So as frequency changes, so does the phase shift. So it's no longer a splitter. It's a splitter with a phase shift component. This could be useful for some other applications. Say that you have a circuit and your brain, a circuit has a certain phase coming in and you want it to go to another part of the circuit and you need two outputs to be synced up in phase because they're slightly off from one from another. So you need to even them up. So what you could do with this is you put C4 in and then put a variable, put a potentiometer in for R3 and you can adjust R3 to then bring the two out of phase signals into phase lock. This could be very useful in some other noise applications where the noise isn't so much the white noise or pink noise in the circuit, but the noise is a phase mismatch in the circuit. You would use a phase splitter by then bypassing R3, making R3 as a potentiometer, and move this phase shift differential back and forth from zero to something else in order to synchronize it with this, another signal before you mix them together. This would be a good application of this FET phase splitter. I built the circuit. It's not very big. It's as big as, as, a, as a thumbnail. I mean, it's not too big. About a half inch square, half inch tall. It's really tiny. So I, I put on, on the screen, I, I use strip board, strip directions vertical. And then a whole count. This so this is one one, and this is seven five. So it's row seven, uh, column five, R two, the FET. I've outlined the FET so you can see where the flat side is. And from the top view, you have the gate, the source, and the drain. I've used the socket for the FET. I, if you solder a FET, you run the risk of overheating it and burning it before you and ruining it before you even start. Uh, C one, C three. C2, R2, R1. Here are the connection uh, points on the perf board, the strip board, and the circuit. And as a reminder that when a FET drops below 7 volts, it quits working. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.